Hi everybody, this is Carlos Coronado from Coma and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to implement through your foliage uh, a really decent and easy to do material for have this sort of like wind uh, uh, wind feeling, windy feeling or kind of a, a little movement so first let's take a look at how does it look in game Now I want to say that uh, the key points of this method are two. The first one is you can actually control the speed and the kind of wind you want. You can have like a constant wind. You can have like a really, really, really windy effect. And the good thing about that is that you can actually tweak that in a material instance constant and it's it's just four parameters and well another of the key points of this technique is you don't really actually need any vertex paint it's all done by procedural but no no sorry by functions material functions the 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 theory is really easy we have our mesh and we're saying A, hey, the higher parts of the mesh are going to be affected by wind and the lower part of the mesh are going to be. When I'm saying mesh, actually I'm referring to, to the UV space of the mesh. So for example, if I select this bush over here and we'll look to the texture, we will we will see that it has to be okay. So here is our texture, and as you can see, the texture is it's normal texture, and the only the only uh, limitation that this method has is how is the UV space. For this method to work, the UV space of your texture has to be a single UV space like this. I mean, if you have something rotated or something like upside down, uh, etc., it won't work. And that's why uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a gradient from black to white in this UV space and from up to down to tell the UDK, the UDK which part are going to be affected by the movement and which parts are going to be. In this case the lower parts won't be and the higher parts will be. If you have uh, this can be of course solved by implementing a vertex node in the material. But I prefer it like this because in almost all my foliage is going to be like that. Yeah, there are going to be a bunch of planes put together in a UV space like this. Alright, so let's take a look at the anti-material. So for the material we select one of the meshes and okay, here we put the mesh and the material. The material, the final material, uh, as you can see, is a material instance constant, which is it's pretty cool because at the at the end you will have like control of the kind of wind that you have. For example. The first parameter is it for instancing? This is um, yes, this is because depending on the type of mesh you are using, if you are using like a a normal mesh like this one, you can move, uh, rotate, etc. It has one functionality, and if you are using your mesh for instancing, I mean for painting foliage, 
you need another kind of function. It's just a little change, but you need to make the difference because otherwise it won't work. So right, first. Uh, yes, in my case, I I I also have a little vector parameter, so I can control the color of my of my texture. So I can have uh, like variation without using different textures, which also is really interesting. And now the the key point of this material. Well, first we've got the auto illumination. It's a little bit of uh, self lightning. I use it to kind of not having those really hard blacks and hard contrast in it. So, okay, let's put it to point 15. Alright. And um, now it's here are the the fancy parameters. Here is the overall wind multiple. This means this number controls actually the amount of wind of that you're going to have. For example, if I put eight, as you can see, is this is moving but really, really, really slow. So we now have like a soft wind. If we put something like that. This will have an well. This actually isn't pretty now, <laughs> but I mean you can control the, the the speed that you want. How the the actual amount of wind. And now we have like two groups: the soft wind groups and the strong wind groups. Now, okay, to make things clear, the soft wind will control the amount of <coughs> sorry of just a sinus wind from left to right movement and the strong wind will control the variation of that uh, sinus function so for example if I say uh, like zero zero and zero and I put the soft wind force upper like I don't know like I put it uh, zero here too. No, that's bad. Okay, as you can see, the soft wind parameters are just a uh, kind of making this simple movement, and uh, the amount of soft winds controls the how long are they going to be, like this kind of frequency. Now the force will control the period of the of the wind and the speed will control the period but not the it's another useful parameter not that period but this one the amount the yes the frequency so well that's that's it Let's take it one now the speed going three. Okay, and the strong wind it's just like a variation to that soft wind. So if I choo, 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 you will see that this is not kind of constant. Well actually it is, but not in the same way because there is a rotation function in the material. Now we we have like a, a little twinkle, you know? it will start like faster, then it will go slow, then it will go fast again, etc, uh, etc. Et okay, so let's see how this can be achieved. Now oh, another useful part of having the material in this setup. If you rotate your mesh, the wind will also have the correct effect. It has no implication with pole wall position or wall, wall orientation, which I think it's pretty cool. Okay, let's let's see. 